What up y'all? We realize that a lot of you are not subscribed, but are watching the content. Some people are not signed in on through their televisions, so that might be the case. But if it's not, please subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a cash app that we never promote, so if anyone appreciates this content and want to donate, it would be greatly appreciated. We try to push out stories consistently, so, show us some love if you got it. Enough of that though. I'm known Angel. Um... Thanks be my whole life. <laughs> In front of Angelica Sutton's childhood home tonight, disbelief dissolved into raw emotion. The night before um, she passed, I was talking to her, and you know, she was showing me the sonograms, and then the next day, like, I got the news at 8.15 on Friday, you know, that they took my friend. Her nickname was Angel the 22-year-old mom-to-be, a recent grad of St. John's with a whole life ahead of her. A life ripped away, say police, by a deranged acquaintance named Ashley Wade. Okay, we back in the Bronx with a short story. This one is a little different. But we are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. A young Bronx woman who was desperate to have a child, slit the throat of a nine months pregnant woman, carved the live baby out of her belly, and then maniacally proclaimed that she had just given birth. It's my baby. Ashley Wade allegedly insisted to cops arriving at the blood-soaked scene, where the placenta and umbilical cord from the gutted woman laid on the floor. The police officers were called to Wade's home in Wakefield at around 2.20 p.m. by her boyfriend, Angel Prelo, who had been summoned by Wade to the scene of the grisly slaying. He was standing outside the home cradling the healthy newborn when the officers showed up. Prelo had been posting pictures of sonograms and baby girl clothes on his Facebook page for months. Prelo thought November 15 was Wade's due date. Wade, 22, had known the slain mother to be, Angelique Sutton, also 22, since the two were kids. Wade allegedly stabbed Sutton and then performed a crude cesarean section, ripping the infant girl from her womb. The placenta was on the floor, and the perp had cut the cord herself, a sore said. Sutton and her baby were taken to Montefiore Hospital, where Sutton was pronounced dead. The baby survived. Wade was taken into custody at the scene and was being held for observation at Jacoby Medical Center. Charges against her were pending. Though Prelo thought his new daughter would arrive on the 15th, Wade had told neighbors she was due to give birth the following week, said a friend of Wade's landlord. She was kind of heavy, she said. I'm really upset, we're all upset because she was such a nice person. Something's wrong with her. The couple was very nice. One neighbor described Wade sitting in the back of a police car after she was taken into custody, her hands covered in blood. I want to say she was in a state of shock because her face was expressionless, said a woman. Authorities were seeking a search warrant to test whether Wade actually was pregnant. It looks like the baby was surgically removed, a Bronx councilman said outside Wade's house. This is unforeseeable. With the holidays approaching, what a bloody way to start the season, he added. Sutton and the father of Sutton's baby, Patrick Bradley, had registered for baby gifts on the baby gift registry site, The Bump. Due date, December 2, 2015, read the registry listing, on which the couple sought a pink folding hamper, pink flannel receiving blankets and pink bird bedecked crib bedding. They are matching the blood of the baby to the deceased, the councilman said at the crime scene. The baby already had piles of neatly stacked brightly colored clothes, the tiniest pairs of Mary Janes and a mother cooing over sonogram pictures. My baby angel, Ashley Wade proclaimed on Facebook, commenting on ultrasound images of a fetus's face, calling the girl, my little dimpled cutie pie. But it was all a lie, the sick delusion of a woman who wanted so badly to have a newborn, that she would kill to get one, police said. She then ripped the unborn baby from her victim's body and proclaimed it was hers, according to investigators. Angel Prelo apparently had no idea that girlfriend Ashley Wade was not really pregnant, posting pictures of baby clothes and sonograms as part of preparation for the little one's arrival. For months, Wade had lied to friends and acquaintances that she was pregnant. She stuck to her lie, even as cops arrived on a Friday afternoon at the blood-soaked crime scene. It's my baby. She insisted, even as the baby's real mother, Angelique Sutton, lay dying in the nearby bedroom. Wade and Sutton were childhood friends who had recently reconnected. Sutton, also 22, was eight one-half months pregnant with her own baby girl, whom she had already named, Genesis. The women lunched at Applebee's and shopped for baby stuff together, police sources said. 
Everyone in Wade's life was eagerly awaiting the baby girl she claimed was coming. I thought she was pregnant. I didn't know she wasn't, said Wade's landlord, who deals with pregnant women as an OB gin nurse. She had me fooled, she was heavy, so I couldn't tell. Genesis's father, Patrick Bradley, posted a photo of his baby girl on Facebook. She said she was supposed to deliver on Monday, and I texted her and asked if she had the baby, and she said, no, not yet Paris told the post. Have you ever witnessed a story like this? It's crazy. Only on the Lifetime Movie Network. Wade's boyfriend of six years was ready to be a dad. Angel Prillo wrote about his baby girl on Facebook, posting the 3D images of the fetus's face and answering questions from relatives eager to attend the baby shower. Prillo told one family member on Facebook that they thought November 15, 2015, was Wade's due date. But on Facebook that day, he wrote, she not ready to come out yet. It's a shocker to him. It's a shocker to me and my wife, said Angel's dad, Stephen Prelo. Wade was in the Prelo home three weeks prior, he said. I was telling her, I can't wait till November, when the babies do. I thought I was going to be a grandfather, he said. There were always sonogram pictures. But one posted on Angel Prelo's Facebook page in May, and again that July, exactly matches sonograms available online via Google Images. When her boyfriend posted the sonogram on his Facebook feed, Wade joked to him, you stole my picture. Stephen Prelo said his son didn't go to Wade's doctor's appointments because he was always working in the kitchens at New York University. That's how she really got away with it, Stephen Prelo mused. Angel Prelo, who was not considered a suspect, finally learned the truth on a Friday afternoon when Wade called asking him to come to her home immediately. The reason? She had done something very bad, she told Prelo. The boyfriend raced to Wade's Monticello Avenue apartment and found a bloodbath inside. Sutton lay on the bed, barely alive. Her placenta was on the floor. Prelo took the baby, wrapped her in a jacket, carried her outside and called 911. The baby remained in stable condition at Montefiore Hospital. Wade repeatedly sank a knife into expectant mom Sutton multiple times, telling police she stabbed Sutton as many times as she could. She blamed the killing on Sutton, claiming the victim lunged first during an argument. She claimed she cut the wounded woman open to save the baby girl. Sutton's loved ones reeled at news of her horrifying death. How can you be so spiteful to cut someone's baby out? That's sick, said Sutton's neighbor at the time. It's beyond mentally ill. Another longtime neighbor wept as he spoke of Sutton's death. Man, just like that, she is gone, said the retired construction worker, tears rolling down his cheeks. I watched her as a kid, riding her bicycle up and down the block. It's sad to see her pass like that. Another family friend said Sutton and her boyfriend, Patrick Bradley, were a good match. She was such a sweet girl, really happy. Everybody loved her. Everybody was excited. It was her first child. She was in love with the baby's father, said the woman, who declined to give her name. The couple had dated for eight years. They met in Zion Hill Episcopal Church, where Sutton's father was the pastor. Sutton was a pretty perfect human being. She was always smiling, joking, said her friend. She was to be godmother to Genesis. I don't know what the family will do now, she said. Nobody's okay. Pray for her and her family. An incredible soul was lost. Just pray for us, okay? September, 2017. More difficult moments were surely ahead, especially for Sutton's distraught parents, who would have to relive their daughter's brutal death as the trial of her alleged murderer began. The grieving parents were expected to be in the courtroom when Wade's trial on murder and kidnapping charges unfolded in the Bronx Hall of Justice. They sat stoically through days of jury selection and hearings, as the court justice warned prospective jurors about the nature of the case. The testimony and the pictures will at times be extremely graphic, she said. Potential jurors gasped as the accusations were read in court. A pale, bespectacled Wade, 23, who has pleaded not guilty, quietly wept as the allegations were repeated. When the assistant district attorney asked one prospective juror what his first reaction was to the case particulars, he replied simply, holy shit. Prosecutors intend to prove Wade, who had infant clothes neatly stacked in her Monticello Avenue home ready and waiting, killed Sutton to take her baby. The killer avoided stabbing Sutton in the abdomen during the murder, a sign of the planned kidnapping, the Bronx District Attorney's Office said. 
but Wade, who endured a lifetime of depression, childhood abuse and domestic violence even in the months leading up to Sutton's murder, had no getaway plan, said her defense attorney, who said she was not intending to pursue an insanity defense. If the point of the killing was to get to the baby, what was the end game? What was the escape plan? Wade's defense said during a hearing about whether certain medical and psychiatric records should be provided to jurors. 911 was called multiple times, and she waited outside, Atcha said. All of this goes to a lack of pre-planning. Wade claimed to cops the victim had attacked her, and that she stabbed Sutton in self-defense. She rescued Genesis, Wade told officers. Holding her felt right and I believed that that little girl was mine, she said, according to court papers. Her defense attorney hoped to show that Wade became so temporarily overwhelmed by her emotions as she and Sutton spoke, she lost control. It's called the extreme emotional disturbance defense. The pressure on Wade increased the day of the murder as the women discussed their childhood, with Sutton claiming their friends had believed Wade was arrogant, she said. Faced with a friend who had everything she didn't, a pregnancy, a supportive family, Wade snapped, the defense argued. She needed to make that stop. Wade was found fit to stand trial in the hearing. If the defense was to succeed, the charges would be reduced to manslaughter, and Wade would dodge a life sentence. Oblivious to the legal battle surrounding her, little Genesis continued to bring a measure of light and happiness to those who suffered the darkest of tragedies. During trial, Wade hid her face as prosecutors presented chilling photos of the bloodbath, and jurors looked on in sheer horror. She wiped frantically at her eyes as the aghast panel was shown crime scene photos of Angelique Sutton's hacked and blood-soaked remains. The snapshots included lacerations on the mom Tubi's face, neck, and hands. One juror covered his mouth in shock, and another brought her hand to her chin, as they were forced to look upon Sutton's bloodied face. The victim's family left the courtroom before the photos were shown. As we stated, baby Genesis miraculously survived the attack and was living with her father Patrick Bradley, but one photo revealed the newborn received two gashes on her right thigh, as Wade cut her from Sutton's body. Yet another set of eerie photos depicted Wade's tranquil bedroom, complete with a crib, changing table and baby clothes and the bloodied knife, laying on the floor. As we stated, Wade and Sutton had known each other during childhood and reconnected on social media over their allegedly mutual pregnancies. Wade had invited Sutton to her apartment on November 20, 2015, as she was en route to marry Bradley at the courthouse, saying she had a gift for her. Instead, the wanted mom attacked the bride with a paring knife, slicing her larynx so she could not scream, and then cutting out her uterus, taking the baby, and discarding the organ on the bathroom floor, prosecutors had said. Then, as Sutton bled out, Wade prepared a bottle of formula and swaddled Genesis, telling responding officers the tot was her own. She later told cops she's rescued the baby. Additional photos depicted a blood-splattered suitcase in the living room, near the attack, and a lone sandal sitting in the bathtub. A NYPD detective testified it appeared that Wade had attempted some cleanup, as blood-soaked sponges were recovered in what appeared to be the shower curtain. Both the sponges and plastic had been stuffed in another bag. Wade's ex-boyfriend begrudgingly took the stand, admitting the two dated for five or six years. Andrew Prillo told jurors Wade had told him she was pregnant, and he never questioned it, because her stomach was growing, and he felt the baby. The day of Sutton's murder, she suddenly called him and told him she'd just had a baby, adding, I think I killed somebody. He rushed to the apartment, and saw blood. I turned to my left and I saw legs on the floor. Prelo recalled how, through his own tears, he saw Wade looking at him with a face I never saw before. She then told him she'd just given birth. He grabbed the baby and a blanket and waited outside for cops, all the while believing the little girl was his. Prelo also revealed that Wade had previously feigned a 2013 birth, claiming the child lived for two or three days and then died. He never saw the tot and never found any record of its birth. It would be almost exactly two years later, when Wade was sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. Genesis, who miraculously survived, was watching from the courtroom gallery. She was to turn two years old that Monday. I just want to say that I'm so sorry, killer Ashley Wade sobbed hysterically as she addressed the court in a self-serving plea for mercy. I'm so sorry. There are no words to express how sorry I am. I'm sorry for hurting so many people.
the fact that she was suffering from terrible depression, that she had terrible issues going on, maybe none of this would happen. But the judge was not moved, citing testimony that confirmed Wade's extensive and sinister planning to murder Sutton and cut her baby out of her body without harming the child. Those days of planning and those moments of slaying Angelica and stealing her baby, she did in fact in those moments become a monster. The beautiful, happy baby girl in the courtroom today, surrounded by the family of a mother she will never come to know. She will inevitably know that the day of her birth, a day that should be one of celebration of her life for all her years ahead, will be forever tainted because she was born through the violent death of the mother that she will never know. Judge Clancy sentenced Wade to 25 years to life for murder and 15 years for kidnapping. Those sentences will be served consecutively, meaning she will spend at least 40 years in prison. The judge called the attack calculated, cunning and brutal, and dismissed the defense attorney's repeated assertions Wade suffers from mental health issues. These actions were not impulsive, they were carefully planned and researched, the judge hissed. The cutting of the uterus with precision shows she studied how to research and kill Angelique. Sutton's parents smiled with relief as Wade was sentenced to 25 years to life for second-degree murder, followed by another 15 years for second-degree kidnapping. Her parents looked relieved as they left court. I'm just glad that we got justice, I'm glad, her father, Bishop William Sutton, said as he left court. Do you feel like you got some kind of closure? Yes, we did. We did. We got justice. Bishop Sutton forces a smile outside the Bronx courthouse minutes after a judge sentenced his pregnant daughter's killer to prison. The defendant betrayed the trust of someone she had known since childhood, murdering the victim on her wedding day and taking her child from her womb, the Bronx DA said in a statement. The child miraculously survived and is thriving. We are pleased to have brought her and her mother's family a measure of peace and justice. Crazy stuff here. But this about wraps this one up, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.